If you love classic cars, then Donald loves you. Hi, I'm Donald Osborne, Audrain's CEO. We're here in the Audrain Automobile Museum in Newport, Rhode Island, in our exhibition, The Past to the Present, Power and Speed with Style. We're looking at how the DNA of an auto manufacturer lives and thrives through the decades. And today, we're talking about Aston Martin, one of the truly globally recognizable names. And, very interestingly, a name that's globally recognized because of a film. Just as Stutz, the American car manufacturer, had a great slogan, the car that made its name in a day because of, of its performance at Indianapolis in the 500, so Aston Martin could also be considered the car whose name was made in a movie. Of course, everyone around the world knows the James Bond movies, and everyone knows Aston Martin from the great DB5, or so it was thought, that James Bond drove in the movie Goldfinger. Well, the car I'm standing next to now is not a DB5. In fact, it's a DB4 Vantage, 1963. This was Aston Martin's top performance car for the road, just under their fire-breathing Aston Martin Lightweight GT. This car was originally equipped with a 3.7 liter inline double overhead cam six, but this particular example has been bored out to 4.2 liters, producing 360 horsepower, and in a car that only weighs 2,870 pounds, produces stellar performance. Now, of course, Aston Martin wasn't just a company that appeared from nowhere out of a James Bond movie. Aston Martin had a notable and remarkable competition history climaxed by its 1959 victory in the 24-hour of Le Mans, where the DBR1, driven by the great Carroll Shelby, took overall honors with an Aston Martin DBR1 coming in second as well. This is the legacy of Aston Martin that came into the 1960s. But it's a very interesting thing because, as was the case with many small manufacturers, Aston Martin had a troubled time in business. In fact, David Brown, an industrialist who had a tool and die business and also built tractors among other things, bought the Aston Martin company in 1949 after seeing an ad in the Times of London for a company for sale. He was very interested in motorsport and automobiles and in fact had built his own car many, many years before. But he saw an opportunity with Aston Martin and under his leadership, it became the world brand that it is today. This car, the DB4, was designed by Turing Superleggera in Italy. And the DB4 Vantage that we see here has some of the characteristics of the DB4 GT, notably the covered headlights, which were later used on the DB5, the model everyone knows from the movie Goldfinger, and the great performance of this top-rated engine, which made it a true 150 mile per hour continent crosser. This was an amazing achievement for a car of this displacement in this period and that was so incredibly usable. Aston Martins have all of the luxury that you see in a Bentley, but with lightweight, agile performance. It's really what people think of when they think of Aston Martin. And as we mentioned before, the DB5 that James Bond, Sean Connery, drove in Goldfinger was actually a late production DB4. In fact, it did not have the Vantage engine, but nevertheless, it still gave that wonderful style, and this is the look that everyone expects to see when they think of Aston Martin. And what about Aston Martin today? Well, the spirit continues, but in a very, very different fashion. The present Aston Martin can be seen in this 2015 Vanquish Carbon Edition convertible. This car is equipped with a 6-liter V12 engine producing 567 horsepower. So it's certainly a powerful example of the Aston Martin mark. But in a sign of the change of times, this car weighs over 4,000 pounds and our DB4 Vantage weighed about 2,870 pounds. Nevertheless, the performance of this car is very much worthy of the Aston Martin name. And as you might imagine, by the title of this car, the Carbon Edition, this particular model features a great deal of carbon fiber features, which help actually, in spite of the weight, to lower that weight to a degree that helps the performance a great deal. In addition, we can see that these cars are still very much associated with James Bond 007. Modern Aston Martins have been featured in all of the latest Bond films, and it's not surprising, the Vanquish is among them. 
And can't you just see the super suave 007 coming out of a casino almost anywhere in his black tie, immaculate, and hopping into this black, mysterious vantage carbon and roaring off into the night after some bad guy? I certainly can. Aston Martin may have gone through its latest rescue quite recently, and who knows, as the DBs were named after David Brown, the great owner of Aston Martin, perhaps we will see another series of LS Aston Martins for Lawrence Stroll. Who knows? All we can be sure of is that the spirit and the security of Aston Martin is guaranteed, so we should see these cars for a great long time to come. Hi, it's Donald Osborne with another Audrain Auto Museum Fun Fast Fact Quiz. The mystery of the finish line. In what major international race could you be the first to take the checkered flag and still not be the winner? To find out the answer, come back to see our next video. In the meantime, post in the comments your thoughts on the answer. We'll see you then. Bye. If you like these videos, let your friends know. Subscribe, comment, share.